Welcome to this full review of the new Porsche Cayenne GTS. We picked here the GTS classic SUV form because here in this carmine red color with the GTS black accentuations, this is the classic Porsche Cayenne GTS. But in this review, we also compare it a little bit to the Coupe version, also show a different exhaust note comparison and also compare the interiors, classic SUV and the Coupe. And what's so special about this GTS version? Now, once again, with the eight cylinder. Here on Autogefuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. With Thomas in front of the camera, everything in exterior, interior and the driving experience. In full HD, full screen and full length. And I would say, there's an epic intro by Jonas coming up. Let's go! In the front, we can see the typical Porsche shape, round structure, sport designs, a put up 911, that's how the Cayenne started. And the GTS version has, of course, a more menacing air intake, black accentuations already here, stronger bumper, and so on. Then also the black grill here in the front. So, a little sporty look, also dark background for the headlamps. Headlamps start standard with LED with all Cayenne versions. Then the GTS already includes the second trim, which is the dynamic LED. And optional, you can also go for matrix LED. You can already see here the four dot LED daytime running light signature. All right, guys, now it's time to take the bets. From which side will I enter the screen today? You have three more seconds. I'll tell you the length, four meters 92, 16 foot 1 or 194 inches is the length of the Cayenne and here I am, gotcha. You thought this side, right? <laughs> well, but if you were right then, congratulations. So here the GTS, you can see it always comes standard with the painted wheel arches in the vehicle color to again get the sportier look. To me an SUV rather fits more when you have the crossover wheel arches, but what do you think? There is a possibility for the Coupe version to change that. We're soon going to show you that. However, here then it fits also to the rest of the color. Then, as for the wheel size, the base Cayenne would start 19 inch. The GTS automatically comes with 21 inch. You can also see it here. There are also 22 inch available. Again, we can show you that very soon. Here, the black design also is also standard because the black is the scheme of the GTS and also in the nice spider look here, it's like a little bit 90s inspired, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> then the carbon ceramic brakes is the option here. You can see it here also with the yellow brake caliper, PCCB. However, you can also go for the PSCB, that would be the tungsten carbide coating. And I would rather go for these if I want optional brakes, because they also eliminate the brake dust, but are not as expensive as these here. Then the typical SUV shape, both available this one and also in the Coupe. And the GTS also comes with the high gloss black frames here, again, to get this dark, menacing GTS look. In the rear, we can see black accentuations everywhere, the Porsche logo hidden behind 
the glass here is also in black Cayenne GTS logo in black, black diffuser in low part, everything dark tinted. Very cool, definitely. Of course, it would be more elegant then when it's in a brighter look, but here definitely carried out all the way with a sporty look. Then we got the sports exhaust for pipes, and this here would even be optional for a turbo. You might remember that review. So we have also different versions from the Cayenne in our reviews. So this otherwise optional sports exhaust is standard here for the GTS. And then there's again another option, which would be again exclusive for the Coupe version. Soon going to show that to you and also with the exhaust node comparison. Last but not least, let's talk about the suspensions because the GTS would come standard with minus 10 millimeter PASM, the Porsche adaptive suspension. And then option you can go for the air suspension that in the GTS sits 10 millimeters lower from the base setup, but also varies in the height then. As for the engines for the KN, let's start with the general overview. General overview. <laughs> so we start with the V6 3 liter engine, 340 horsepower and the base KN. Then there's the S model, the 2.9 liter V6 with 440 horsepower. Then you get the 3 liter V6 P half, 462 horsepower. Then comes here the 4 liter V8 now, again in the GTS with 460 horsepower. Excavation figure four and a half seconds to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour and above that would be the turbo which has the same base engine also the 4 liter v8 but then 550 horsepower or 680 horsepower with the electric motor in the turbo s p half so where does it sit yeah just next to the turbo horsepower wise but also next to the s model horsepower wise in between so to say but then again, difference for the S model and this one here is probably also the reason why they put then the cylinder difference because the horsepower difference, yeah, you know, it's just marginal, by, by the way. I mean, in acceleration wise, it also doesn't make too much of a difference if you then go for the S model, the GDS or with the turbo. Here, for example, comparing the turbo is about 0.5 seconds the difference where the turbo is a little bit faster. But while driving, it doesn't make such a difference. What is clear is that is the cheapest V8, so to say, and the extra price for a turbo is not really worth it. If you think about about 70,000 euros, something more plus for a base Cayenne, euros or dollars, and then you pay about double the price for a turbo model, also with the spec, and then the GTS is exactly in the middle. Interior. First of all, the door closing sound, very solid. In this case, we also have the option here of a soft close. Mm -hmm. Magic. Then, inside of the doors, here Alcantara is the GTS scheme. So let me just deactivate that beeping sound when the ignition is turned on. So G uh, GTS has Alcantara at the inside of the doors and red contrast stitching. And that's of course then also really fitting to the exterior color. Reasonable door pockets on the inside. Then we have a KN GTS entry badge right there and the floor mats once again with the red contrast stitches and more Alcantara in the interior. For example, with the steering wheel, that's the best steering wheel you can get. Great grip and also very cozy both in summer and winter times. Then there's a dark head headlining also all the way covered with Alcantara. It's pretty cool. You can also go for a panoramic roof, which reduces the headroom a little bit, but brings more light in the interior. However, well, with the GTS, of course, <laughs> you see more Alcantara when you have not picked the panoramic roof. Then special sports seats for the GTS, also with a stitched logo right here. There are some animal parts left unnecessarily. However, the main structure then is the Alcantara on the inside. Once again, signature to the GTS. 
will soon also show you a coupe version with the optional sports lightweight package which also goes with the fabric seats but this would be more typical gts that's why we picked this car as a main vehicle here today so let's get inside and the sport seats are still comfortable you have the upright very sovereign seating position here for the kn and head clearance here with one is 86 or 6 with 1, there's really plenty of headroom left. With the panoramic roof, it will be reduced like, you know, to, to this amount, but still you get long even when you're a little bit taller. You actually start the car right here, left, you have this key in the pocket or, or somewhere. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, they do that because the typical thing would be that you open, uh, that, that you know, put the key in here. They didn't want to do that here that you can keep it in your pocket but then again i think it's just too complicated you know why not just a start stop button somewhere i mean or well, what's your take do you like that to, to still have that feature then here at the steering wheel we also have the shifting pedals that give you also a very nice feedback and the driving mode selector that's another important feature sport and sport plus mode and this is the sport response button then for 20 seconds here you can see uh, you have even more boost but pff, I'm not sure I haven't you know I've used it for testing purposes but not really intended to use it because pff, when you want to accelerate a little bit harder or plan an overtaking maneuver you usually go to the sports mode and you know then that's it so once again comfortable seating position I like these sports they give you a little bit more shoulder support but without caging you in but there's also the electronic support here that you can make the bolts as a little bit slimmer or wider depending on your liking and also the front area here can be drawn inward or outward depending on how you like that best so overall i think good seating position and you already feel the sportier touch of the gts so definitely also interior wise the gts is the sportiest km now the interior overview you can see here again the horizontal stress red contour stitches sports chrono pack here with the red <laughs> arrow so yeah always a beautiful emotional feature 12.3 inch full hd display left side two seven inch screens and with the centralized analog rp meter soon more deals to the systems steering wheel again with the great alcantara cover i would always go for it no matter what it's really cool and just brings joy in every every drive left side you have volume plus and minus and then you can control left thumb with that screen and right thumb controlled the other screen picking up the phone and so on driving mode select you've already seen then in this middle console part the high gloss black everything you have to clean it quite often due to the dust you have some hotkeys still for the gps um, i always wonder that the gps hotkey is on the right side hmm. i would like to have it on the left side actually but oh, maybe it's just me then the uh, climate control is right here, metal knobs, good quality, and auto clicking sounds. Yeah, I could do that all day. <laughs> but then a lot of controls left here, for example, also for adjusting the suspension thing. And see, it also leaves fingerprints, although I, you know, I really don't have greasy fingers at all, but still it shows you know, a little bit of grease then on these so extremely prone to fingerprints. The suspension settings, by the way, also change according to the driving mode. So here, sports mode and sports plus mode, then they also change magically, so to say. There's still a volume button left, by the way, just behind the steering, the, the, the shifting lever right here. And then further there, we have adaptive cup holders here. Oh, that's also like a special portion mark. It's interesting with the, the tire profile around it. So we make like, you know, oh, win a Porsche mark in the non outgefühl <laughs> Then we have the Alcantara surfacing here. Very nice and cozy also on the armrest. When we put it up, we have space for our smartphone. Now with USB-C chargers. You can individualize your home screen, what you want to see, you know, at first sight. Then there's a GPS right here. Good visualization, quite clear and also responsive enough. 
and you pick all the stuff here on the left side doing that while driving is a little bit complicated i think the audi software solution is a little bit better to use i think with the you know big app views right there here for example again you can see how the driving mode selected steering wheel also changes different settings and you can also play with the air suspension right there there is also an off-road mode where the air suspension goes all the way up then climate control most of the stuff is done with the buttons but for example turning on and off the ac you can only do that in the menu then carplay integration is right here but you can also you know no you can't <laughs> yeah that's life usually i mean why do they show this arrow then usually it's there that you can make it full screen here but in this case it's just grayed out not sure so that's then the Apple carplay integration and let's listen to that sound system it's the bose sound system we have built in here it sounds quite nice you can also go to the sound settings and i recommend having here with the surround media settings especially for this kind of music then you have a more three-dimensional sound of all and the instruments classic the analog meter here for the rpms in the middle part but you still have also a digital speed check engine light by the way it's just when the ignition is on when you really start the engine then it disappears more you can change here on the right side here for example the gps is pretty cool to have it in there also it appears when you reach the next intersection for example geforce meter pcc we talk about that when we drive the car that's the entire roll control and we have the all-wheel drive distribution right here. And by the way, the fuel economy or fuel consumption for the day between 10 and 12 liters, even if you keep it rather calm on one kilometers. So you're in a 20 mpg something range. But when you floor it out and do test drives, it can also jump a little bit more up. Ooh. Now to the rear, classic SUV building style we have here and again, I can tell use of the inside of the doors, soft touch materials everywhere. This in this case should be the little red. And then the rear seats also with the same design scheme. And you already see this very upright seating position. That's pretty cool. Remember the platform is the same. They use also for the Volkswagen Touareg and for the Audi Q7, Audi Q8 and so on. All siblings and also built in the same plant. So, Let's see about the rear seating. Today, important shoe taps to get out, <laughs> get rid of the mud. And then there's plenty of legroom left. That's comfortable. Upright here, very, very comfortable in the rear end. Can just stress again, this is way more comfortable than you would think of like being in a Palamera, for example. So, handroom here, also no problem with 1m86 or 6 foot one Again, panoramic roof would reduce it. And also when you sit in the coupe, I'm soon going, uh, you know, soon going to show you that. This is an also a little bit limited, but they put the bench a little bit lower than for that. Here in this case, talking about the bench, you can vary the back part of the seat. And this is also a very high class lever. Then you can put it more back or a little bit more upright. You can also move the whole bench and two third, one third split forward for more trunk, or then again for more legroom. Isofix are at the outside of the seats each. In this case, we also have a bench with a middle seating, although it's kind of single seat design. And the armrest, spread out, but not adaptive, the cup holders here. You can also just switch the middle part here as a you know, ski hatch. Sitting in the middle part, actually, does that work? actually quite okay because they put the middle part also a little bit lower headroom wise there's no problem it's actually one of the rare cars where sitting in the middle seat is actually very comfortable so big surprise for that no problem so driving it with five tall adults does work just have to put your feet right and left next to the all-wheel drive tunnel and then we have a sophisticated Climate unit in here also with the metal knurled knobs. That's pretty cool. Seat heating also for the outward seats. But yeah, that doesn't all come standard. And now USB-C chargers for the rear. 
770 liter is the trunk capacity a very well usable sports car and sometimes we show you everything cleaned up and empty and today i want to show you how does it look like when it's really all packed and that's how it looks like and you can see or have a you know better impression what you can actually fit in there this again the normal suv version and the coupe will be then limited a little bit in the height right here so it's you know a little bit more of a compromise then so the height up to the cover is 43 centimeters the width is a little bit more than a meter and the normal trunk length is also a little bit more than a meter so these are really good dimensions and the total height here would be almost 80 centimeters last but not least the loading sill also about 80 centimeters so really good dimensions for this trunk the only thing well you can when you have the optional air suspension also lower it a little bit with the buttons here at the inside that you have an you know easier loading entry however flipping them here yeah you have to go around and come that handy but i think it's also the same for the audi q7 for example there we go then you can also fix them right here and when i leave the seat as i would be driving this is the maximum of two meters this stick and this is about one meters and 90 to my front driver seat the new gts available both for the classic suv form and also here for the coupe so this is here a gts coupe but also a special one first of all lava orange is the color and then there is this optional lightweight sports package which is exclusively available for the coupe and that includes first of all you can see here the contrasting normal plastic wheel arches which are not standard for the gts then you have the 22 inch wheels really massive and carbon fiber steering brakes are to that still an option but included in this lightweight package is also the carbon fiber roof and of course you cannot go for a panoramic roof and especially the combination the lightweight sports package with the new gts will also feature a brand new additional exhaust and in the rear this is new when you have the new gts here and you have the coupe then you can get with the sports design package also this new centralized sports exhaust with even more boost so again not available for the classic suv form and also exclusive for the gts coupe looks very interesting looks very different let's make a sound test first the normal gts exhaust that we also have at the suv and then this special optional performance exhaust and as a variation we also have the coupe version here for you and this is the coupe here as we showed you earlier with the exterior with the sport design package and when you have the sport design package on the inside you then don't get the gts alcantara but you have the sporty fabric seats and they're also pretty cool the look is of course a matter of preference but the fabric material is for the climate function so to say so that it stays cooler in summer and warm in winter to me even a little bit better than the alcantara especially in summer whereas the alcantara feels a little bit cozier this one stays even a little bit cooler than the alcantara in summer so it's also a nice choice this one with the sport design package of course always just with the alcantara headlining without the panoramic roof option because we have the carbon fiber roof and here being in the coupe version in the front without the panoramic roof here a lot of headroom left so in the front it's not really an issue if you go coupe or with the suv and the coupe with the design package sport design package in the rear you can see here the fabric also counts for the rear seats and then you can also have this single setup or a through bench both possible and here we go and well difference here in the coupe is that you sit a little bit lower and the angle is also a little bit different so they put the bench lower that is less comfortable from a seating position but the reason is that you don't lose too much headroom so you have a little less headroom yeah especially if you lean backwards definitely however because the bench was lowered 
is not, you know, is quite okay still. You can see it with tall adults, no problem. So if they have, would have kept the bench like this, then it would have been a problem. But overall, definitely the SUV has more comfort in the rear. I know <laughs> you can do it even better with two wheels but I also don't want to exceed the speed limit so yeah where are the others <laughs> yeah that was uh, like 0 to 80 approximately acceleration in sports plus mode yeah pretty impressive also with a decent sound you can of course also use the launch control by I I didn't want to show off too much now at the, um, at the traffic light because there were other cars around. Um, yeah, well, I think that's a nice start here. <laughs> Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge with the Porsche Cayenne GTS here in this new generation. And you might ask yourself, since we have the 8-cylinder here then, so what would be the reason to take the turbo again and pay even more money for that? Actually. I have no idea, because when you seek a sportier Cayenne, so then that's here definitely the way to go. I can already tell you that right now. So either I would ra rather go, like, stick with a base six-cylinder, the three-liter six-cylinder, not even the S version, just base trim, and that's it, and don't pay too much money for it. Or if you want the sportiest Cayenne, then you can directly go with the GTS, have the Alcantara seating and so on. Have a great performance indeed. The additional horsepower from the turbo that doesn't make too much of a difference indeed. And you have a very sporty setup here. So remember, you either have the PASM, this adaptive suspension, 20 millimeters lower in the GTS setup, or you have the air suspension optional, which is also equipped with this very test vehicle, and that is done 10 millimeters lower. Um, yeah, since we have the traffic light here, we can do another acceleration. So in either way, the GTS will also be stiffer and sportier. And then we also have the PDCC in here. That's again zero to 70 kilometers an hour. Yeah, pretty impressive. And um, when you look at the all-wheel drive gauges here, by the way, we have a rear wheel bias. And then the more I hit the throttle, the more torque is also sent to the front wheel. Say hello to the speed camera. <laughs> yeah. So that's also a reason not to exceed the speed, of course. Now we can go to 100. Wow, very sonorous eight-cylinder sound here. That's, of course, pretty cool. It gives you such a sovereign feeling. Really cool. And the car is still so great to handle. It's a big SUV, but, you know, it still feels so good in the handling, crisp and precise from the steering. So you have great command over it, especially good grip with the Alcantara steering wheel. And then the PDCC, this you know, anti-roll control. We can also have a different gauge for that here um, that shows me how it you know, evens out the leaning of the vehicle. Wow, that is, you know, keeping that so straight However, if you think about, oh, I get a comfortable air suspension and I want to feel the air suspension, yeah, that's not really the case then here. So if you have the GTS and the air suspension, it's still more comfortable than normal PAs, M, yes. But indeed, you lose comfort. So if you want the most comfort and if you want the soft air suspension, then you would not go for the GTS mode. It really depends on what you like. But if you appreciate a very stiff air suspension in here, for example, you see how upright the car is remaining all the time. Yeah, then that's actually a way to go for. As long as the roads are pretty even and good, that's cool. Here, by the way, the PDCC is always on. So there's um, oh, some colleagues filming right here. <laughs> Um, so it's always on this anti-roll control, but then in the I don't know, sportier modes, it's just like strengthened, so it's a different setting for it. It works even more. Now we have some nice countryside routes, and 
first of all. Here, by the way, in the normal driving mode, even the normal driving mode, well, the gears are not turned up that high then, that's the difference, but still the suspension is always stiff, but a little bit more comfortable in sports mode. Here at about 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour, it's perfectly silent here. It will even be at higher speeds, so the noise installation is superb. You have the upright seating position. The sports seats here are also very decently comfortable. They give you a lot of shoulder support, but without being like this super racy style, which just look good and reduce the comfort extremely. And again, the Alcantara surface is also doing a good comfort job. So, as I said earlier, either go with the Alcantara service or then if you have the um, Coupe, then pick the either also the standard Alcantara or then the fabric seats when you go for the lightweight package. So, indeed, it is somewhat still a compromise uh, between sportiness and comfort, yes. However, then the GTS definitely goes into the very sporty direction. So, once again, the sportiest Cayenne definitely also from especially from driving and also from this you know sinister look from the exterior sportiest one is the GTS and that's something that um, strategy Porsche has been let's say strengthening now with the recent GTS model um, so far you could always say yeah the turbo is sportier because it has a little bit more horsepower the acceleration maybe is a little bit better but now especially with the recent models you can more and more say that the GTS models are always the sportiest ones even though when the turbo gets more horsepower, you know, when you want to show off more, but it doesn't stand in the price performance relation um, or, or something. Here, by the way, the brakes from the carbon ceramic brakes, they have great braking performance. However, you always have to bear in mind, um, I would probably just go either with the base brakes or then with the um, tungsten carbide coating. Um, they give you a little bit better, um, fine, everyday driving feeling. The carbon ceramic brakes would, of course, be the best for the racetrack, but who does that? But I feel, you know, in normal everyday driving, you have to hammer them a little bit more. We also have experienced from one of you guys who told me that they change a little bit over time when you drive the cars longer. We always have the cars when they're still pretty new, you know, but still, I also don't think that the option is really uh, worth it for that. Here now, when the road is a little bit more uneven, then you feel, and it's really, really stiff to set up here, even in normal driving mode, and you really feel like, am I actually really driving air suspension? And I have to check again in the car menu, like, oh yeah, we can change the niveau of suspension. So yes, indeed, this is the air suspension. And to me personally, I always like to feel the air suspension still, and you know, yeah, but it's a matter of preference, this one, and again, when you want the sportiest setup. Yeah, maybe you hear, or even here on camera when we're going off some bumps or something, like bang, bang, although we have air suspension. So, but still, always talking inside the Cayenne model range, is of course still a comfortable car overall, and you can also enjoy some, you know, longer rides and so on. This, um, Standard sport exhaust, which is here with the GTS, would be an optional in other models, by the way. So it's already a little bit louder, but you can really vary it alongside the driving modes. So when I'm here, like, you know, some houses around and so on, I can still leave it in a normal mode that I don't annoy anyone. Because even though when it sounds cool, maybe you don't want to hear it when you're um, sitting in your own garden. And already when I'm here in the sports mode, the gears are turned up higher and there's also um, more sound already. And you can always use the shifting pedals. So when you're in sports or sport bus mode, the gears are already a little bit lower, but you can always strengthen that even more when you just use the shifting pedals, because then you can start an even lower. There was an M2 coming here. It's a really beautiful color, right? Thomas Blue. <laughs> yeah, and what do you need a sporty car for? Overtaking maneuvers, for example. So let's see, we have, have some um, nice more countryside routes and so on ahead where we can have a lot of fun with this vehicle. And in the next intersection, I think we can also pass this truck then. And that's also the thing, when you have such a vehicle, you always feel like, oh yeah, why, why can't this truck move? I want to go, I want to go. So always watch out that you don't drive too fast with it. It's really, because it's so silent here and comfortable, 
yet at the same time so powerful, it is easy to exceed the speed. That would also be like, you know, this, 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 this comfort balance then and the upper seating position. It's of course one of the main reasons to go for the Cayenne instead of a Porsche sports vehicle because you have the Porsche looks, they have the performance and so on. But then again, you have the more upright seating position. So and now we have a clear track. Let's go to the, yeah, let's go sports plus mode. Yay. So gears are turned up higher. Suspension even stiffer. The PDCC is working even more. I can see that now when these arrows are basically, let's say, filling up. So, and wow, look at that in the corner and how upright the car is saying. So you wouldn't really guess it's an SUV. Yes, you feel it yourself, of course, high up the road. But other than that, it really behaves like a smaller sports vehicle agility-wise, and that's of course a very impressive, th impressive thing. Wow. Yeah, indeed. Even feels sportier than, than the turbo, than, you know, just suspension-wise. <laughs> yeah, stuff is flying all around the vehicle, just from the G-forces, but since the suspension is kept so much upper, you hardly feel the G-forces. Of course, they're a little bit rougher when we're going over some bumps, but Look at that, how flawless these corners are being mastered. Yet about 100 kilometers or 60 miles an hour. Yet at the same time, super silent. This is just such a flawless SUV ride. One of the best SUV rides as for sporty aspects, definitely. The Audi RS Q8, I think, is the one that probably comes closest to that. Um, I mean, there are also GLE AMG, for example. Um, that's of course also a very good ride. Um, indeed, you can compare the GLE AMG models to the GTS here, especially because with um, the GLE, with Mercedes in general, is that the normal versions are really set out to a lot of comfort, and then there are sporty AMG versions. There's a big gap in between then, normal models and AMG models, and it's really stiff and rough. And this would be then rather than like the GTS model here from, from the KN. And also the, I mean, driving feeling wise, it really is rather like a BMW X5 or X6M, because the M50i model, the M performance model by BMW, still has a better compromise of comfort and sportiness. So this here, indeed, to me, comparable then to um, GLE 63 or X5, X6M, and the Audi RS Q8. Seeing how the RPMs are turned up there. So, said no one will probably take this car out to the racetrack, but it is actually possible. You know, <laughs> you can take this car out of uh, out to the racetrack and even score some decent lap times. Actually, no problem. Even those, of course, not really meant to be. But these countryside roads, of course, where you can really have a lot of fun with the vehicle. Precise steering commands here once more. And I think you also get a lot of auto really the combination of great landscape and also with a nice sporty ride. So just such a flawless driving feeling. With of course the thing that you do lose comfort with this very stiff setup. I think the question is then at the end of the day, what do you really want? Is it the GTS here, the very sporty one, or is it rather a normal version and what we can do here is do another start from the get-go let's see just was just checking that we have no one view behind us if we have enough space yeah we do and then since we are in the sport plus mode we can also do the launch control to close it up Zero to 110 almost. Yeah. What do you guys think? And some more autobahn impressions here. First of all, the blind spot monitor, talking about assistance systems, appears here in the side mirrors. If you have that package, that's of course a very useful feature. Then we can set adaptive cruise control here in the lower column. The distance of the car in front of me is being kept. 
and it works pretty well indeed and when we have that one activated oh that's not speed camera <laughs> always watch out for those definitely and lane change here again higher speeds wow really flawless and again 120 kilometers an hour so it's like 70 miles an hour really again super silent and so calm and collected indeed so it doesn't have to be that sporty all the time you know it is sporty yes but seen like the harsh acceleration stuff and so on but you can also just use it for rolling on the motorway and then especially when the road is well done then you still have a good comfortable experience as for that so we'll get off here and just switch it around and enter the motorway on the other side it's always a lot of fun even if you are here in the normal driving mode and you still have enough feedback that the car is staying upright again so flawless and when the corner gets a little bit more narrow than you expect it's no problem there's no surprise here the all-wheel drive still shows a rear wheel bias especially also when you go outside the corner so if you at the rear end is going a little bit further around then that's of course a very nice characteristic and again when we have it straight full acceleration then it goes you know up to 50 50 that we can bring more power to the ground actually so i can also set the cruise control here i can also change the distance to the car in front of us and so on um, this is the same way as audi is still using it so far with the separate column here below the steering wheel because on the steering wheel we have the volume buttons here and then right side for example and also to change something in the digital instruments once again we get to the motorway here I can always set it to sports mode here at the steering wheel then I can enter the motorway a little safe <laughs> so to say it doesn't always have to be sports plus mode the sports mode is already enough basically see here that gives a little bit more boost a little bit more sound and yeah indeed it can be a little bit safer because the gears are turned up higher and in some situations you want to be a little bit faster by the way interesting that with the 718 models the sports mode is sportier and then the sports plus mode is even sportier but the sports plus mode doesn't give you the best exhaust note with the 718 models because they want to be just racier for the race track but not the best sound so optimized really for best performance and so on but here with the KN they made it that way that the sport plus mode also increased the okay also increased the exhaust note so here it's really like normal sport sport plus that the exhaust note is strengthened mode by mode so it really depends then on which Porsche model you have once again, I go to the normal mode to show you more of the adaptive cruise control. Here again, lane is being kept or speed is being kept. Um, so they do offer a wide variety of assistance systems. And we can also activate the lane keeping assist here under assistance systems. So you could leave that out if you don't like it, um, but we can also test that. Let's see how the car is. That was a little bit too fast for me. Now it works. Yeah. So here the car is being kept in the lane. Together with the adaptive cruise control, there's then like, uh, I don't know. It doesn't seem to be that active though. Let's test it again. Cruise control, 120. Lane keeping assist is active. Yeah, it works rather late, but that's probably also an intentional setting so it doesn't interfere too much. So, yeah. Um, yeah, indeed, it comes quite late. So you could take it theoretically as a negative, it should maybe keep you in the center lane earlier. But then again, the good feeling is, even if you have that one activated, it doesn't interfere too much with the steering wheel. So we have some cars where you say, like, I need to turn that off, that's really annoying. But here it's rather subtle, and even you know I have it activated now and I don't feel that it would annoy me or, or something 
So you can leave it activated, it's no problem. It's not that you feel I need to deactivate it right now and I think that indeed is a good thing. And now to our conclusion for today with the new Porsche Cayenne GTS. So in general, if you want to go for the best price performance Cayenne, well, then go either with the base version because the 3.0-liter V6 is way more than enough. If you think about more high trim spec and performance, combining that with price performance, the new plug-in hybrid is actually the best price performance overall because they offer it intentionally at a very good price performance rate. If you always think about that the plug-in hybrid has the same horsepower figure than this one here. However, if you want the sportiest Porsche Cayenne, this is for you, the GTS. Sportiest, more menacing look on the exterior, sportiest interior, and also the sportiest driving from the suspension setup. Yes, the downside is that you do not feel anymore it's an air suspension because it has a stiff setup. However, combined with the overall sophisticated driving feeling and the upright seating position, it is still a good, comfortable ride, especially here also on the motorway when it's a good, even surface. Yet again, I mean, it's a big SUV, it's heavy, but they managed here, especially in the GTS version, that it drives literally like a sports car. So together, especially with the features like I didn't mention before, this also had the rear axle steering, a very good option. So to say, fakes a shorter wheelbase, it feels more agile when driving slower because the rear wheels turn in the opposite direction than the front wheels. And then at higher speeds, more stability, rear wheels in the same direction than the front wheels. Together with the PDCC, the anti roll control and so on, what a great handling from this big SUV, one of the best sportiest on the market overall, I think. There, are, there is also some fierce competition, all the RS Q8, for example, I talked about it, or the Mercedes GLE in the AMG versions, just to uh, name a few, BMW, X5 or X6 and the M50i or then the true M versions. You can check out these reviews on Autogofu and compare them. They all somewhat come close, have different emphasis and so on. So please also tune in to these reviews. Also interesting choice between SUV and the SUV Coupe with this special sports lightweight package as well. And the interior fabric seats were for all course also quite nice. Other than that, this is also one of the best interiors as the Alcantara is the sportiest choice and at the same time it's of course also a cozy choice and you have a better climate feature on the seating overall so very nice with a lot of Alcantara use here for the GTS a you know, core characteristic model for all the GTS models not really worth to go the extra price for the turbo I have to be honest then if you want the sportier one just stick with the GTS so what do you think about the KN GTS here for today leave us your comments Tune into more Cayenne versions or as I said to the competitor reviews, we will link them in the video description and in the pinned comments. Thank you so much for tuning in today. See you next time.